G'day guys and gal, it's no secret that I think the Trader Primarchs, and by extension their legions, are pretty retarded. They are on the cusp of total galactic domination, given free will, limitless power, and a galaxy to play with by their father. Yet they decided that burning and genociding the empire that they created, as well as letting their sphincters get desecrated by demons, was the right way to go about things. Most Legion's decision to join the forces of Hell still makes me shake my head. Mortarian, the anti psycho Primarch who swore an oath to bring down tyrants and oppressors, ended up as a Witch King Demon Lord at Tyrant. Fulgrim went from the Emperor's number one simp to an Imperium hating junkie after like one conversation with Horus. However, the one Legion that has genuinely had a lot of logic in betraying the Imperium was the Night Lords. They served with distinction during the Great Crusade, but they were insulted for their methods and isolated due to their Primarch's uh, eccentric personality. It's no wonder they were like, all right, eat my dick and turned on the Emperor. I just finished the Night Lord's Omnibus, which really gives good insight into the logic, culture and mentality of the Night Lords. And I must say, I've gained a newfound respect for them. I'd go as far as to say that they are now my favorite Trader Legion. And by the end of this video, I reckon they'll be yours too. Today we'll go over why the Night Lords Legion are actually dope as hell and don't get the respect they deserve. I'll go over why they're so effective, why their betrayal of the Imperium was the most justified, as well as other stuff like their really cool armor design. I will talk a bit about Conrad, but he is a bit of a cooker. So most of the praise in this video will go to his sons, who despite their father being an absolute crackhead, still managed to turn out somewhat okay. You know, if you ignore their obsession with flaying babies and eating kittens. Let's get into it. Let's start with their actually pretty sweet origins. The OG Night Lords were born on Terra. They were the sons of hardcore prisoners that lived in the darkest depths of the Giga cities on Terra. They were born into darkness and death, as the denizens of the blackness down there were all batshit insane. See what I did there? As such, these children became silent pale stalkers, one with the darkness so to speak. They were so unnerving that even the hardcore prisoners who shared the Undercity with them were like, nope, and actively avoided them. The Emperor on the other hand was like, fuck yeah, this is sick, and he recruited these knights' children, as they were called, to become the first legionnaires of the Night Lords. Out of all the Legion origin stories, that is up there with the most badass by far. They weren't just some desert rats or children of noble families, they already had their own spice, even if that spice was just being incredibly emo. The Night Lords had a strong sense of justice. To them, life was black and white guilty or innocent, thus they never hesitated or felt bad about inflicting justice to those they deemed deserving. This cold and ruthless methodology was a big reason as to why the Night Lords were so scary. They did really fucked up shit, not because it was their duty or they enjoyed it, at least not at the start, they did it because they felt it was morally the right thing to do. The Emperor would rely on them when an enemy needed to be defeated but not destroyed. Opponents that required judgement, but were too valuable to just straight up delete from existence. Who better to do that than Astartes that could terrify the living shit out of you? When the Legion was reunited with Conrad Curse, it was a very easy transitioning process. The people of Nostramo had naturally black eyes, and the Night Lord's Gene Seed also gave you black eyes, so yeah, a bit of a match made in heaven there. Conrad also had a strong sense of justice, even though it was a bit twisted and harsh, and he enjoyed fighting guerrilla warfare, literally like peas in a pod. This brings me to my next point about why the Night Lords are actually pretty damn awesome. During the Great Crusade, they relied on terror and war crimes to achieve Imperial compliance against newly rediscovered human worlds. This doesn't sound that awesome, until you realise that a terrified human is still a living human. The Night Lords inflicted the least amount of casualties and death out of all the legions during the Great Crusade because they were so good at scaring everyone into obedience. What's worse? Killing a million soldiers, then blowing up a populated city to force an enemy to surrender, or flaying alive 1,000 soldiers, placing their still living bodies around a city, and then broadcasting the sounds of 100 noble innocent children getting tortured to death around the entire world, causing the soldiers to surrender and the planet to give up. The first option incurs 1,000 times more death, trillions of dollars in destruction, and a world and population in need of rebuilding. The second option leaves the world's population and infrastructure intact with a very quelled and obedient world. 
Option 1 was regularly performed by legions like the Salamanders, the Blood Angels, and even the Ultramarines. Noble legions who looked down on the Night Lords and their methods of war. You can probably begin to see why the Night Lords were so fucking pissed at everyone. When Imperial Worlds revolted halfway through the Great Crusade, they would instantly surrender and apologize if they heard the Night Lords were coming for them. Yet they would fight against an Imperial Fist invasion, suffering countless deaths and planetary damage. From a logical standpoint, the Night Lord's method is better, and even from an ethical standpoint, the Night Lord's method is still better. The other legions were very hypocritical in judging them for this, thinking the Night Lords as savages whilst they themselves killed millions from orbit. Whilst the Night Lord Legion was initially solid, their Primarch and his attitude was very flawed. Conrad believed that total fear would equal to total control and harmony, which, you know, wasn't wrong. However, that system meant that as soon as total fear vanished, chaos and lawlessness would follow. When he left his pacified homeworld of Nostramo to lead his legion, it descended back into anarchy, as he was the only one holding it together. If he had introduced better education, healthcare, anti-corruption reforms, hell, even some kind of environmental system to allow in a bit of sunlight, his world probably would have remained pure and righteous. Look at Ultramar. You don't see Gilliman flaying everyone's grandma to keep order. This was bad for the Night Lords as their recruiting world was now tainted. The best and brightest were taken to the Night Lords, however that usually meant kids, teenagers and young adults who were the sons of gang lords or were already accomplished criminals themselves. As such the Legion went from the Terran born Knights children mixed with the pure sons of Nostramo to now receiving an influx of murderers, rapists and degenerates who were given superhuman powers. They were still effective for sure, but whilst the true Night Lords and their father performed their many horrific war crimes for justice and duty, the new Night Lords did it for fun. The Legion began to take a bit of a sadistic turn. To make matters worse, when Conrad told Fulgrim about his visions and how he saw the Horus Heresy approaching, Fulgrim told Rogel, who proceeded to call Conrad a little emo cocksucker heretic. Conrad then had a fit and nearly killed Dawn, resulting in him getting thrown in jail. He escaped with his legion and fled into deep space. To try atone for his now corrupted legion and stem the poison, Conrad and his sons blew up their own homeworld of Nostramo. That was actually a pretty admirable move. In Nostramo, they had a ton of resources, endless recruits and a base of operation. However, they gave it all up to try cleanse themselves of their failures and maintain their original nobility. Nice. With the Imperium shunning and looking down on them, half their legion being genuine criminals and now being on the run from Rogel, it's absolutely no wonder that the Night Lords joined Horus and betrayed the Imperium. I'd actually be disappointed if they didn't by that point. They had complete and total justification for their actions. To make them even more badass, they rejected chaos. Their vengeance against the Imperium was pure and deliberate. They would not let it get corrupted and clouded by demonic forces like most of the other traitor legions had. They saw Chaotic Taint as weakness, and they remained surprisingly pure throughout the Heresy and beyond. Night Lord Gene Seed is said to be some of the most pure Gene Seed out there, so there you go. I want to quickly note that Conrad was actually a pretty impressive Primarch, going up against and nearly triumphing against Gilliman, the Lion, Vulcan and Sanguinius in a 4v1 solo war. The Lion and Gilliman would have been dead if it wasn't for some very heavy plot armor. His ability to see the future with great detail made him a nightmare to fight against, easily putting him in the top 5 duelists out of all the Primarchs. The Night Lords did their best during the Heresy, got some wins, got their ass kicked a bit, then retreated to a world called Saguelsa to regroup. Now despite their father's obviously slipping grip on reality, they loved him and they stayed by his side. Even when he had part of their fortress turned into countless human bodies stuck together and kept alive through sorcery. Yeah, that was pretty weird and very questionable, but hey, at least they were fully committing to their villainous role. When other legions would have abandoned their Primarch, the Night Lords stayed by their father, been with him until his assisted suicide at the hands of an Imperial Assassin. Despite all the shit they copped, they remained incredibly loyal sons. Then shit got even worse. The Ultramarines came for them, blowing up their fortress, killing most of the Legion, ruining most of their resources, and scattering the surviving Night Lords into the galaxy. From here, the Night Lord Warbands maintained a lot of their nobility and will, time after time rejecting chaos and continuing their vengeance against the Imperium on their own terms. Don't get me wrong, a lot of Night Lords fell to chaos, but they were generally shunned and insulted by their brothers. They were also pretty rare compared to the corruption in literally every other traitor legion, bar maybe the Alpha Legion. 
The point I'm making here is that they have remained true to their ideals, no matter how questionable those original ideals might have been. The Night Lords of the Great Crusade are very similar to the Night Lords of the modern era. Compare that to the Death Guard, who now smell like someone shut on a blue waffle, or the World Eaters, who can no longer form full sentences, and you'll see that it's quite the achievement. In terms of aesthetics, Night Lords look gorgeous. Their midnight blue armor, combined with their unique armor accents, put their armor customizability and versatility up there with the Blood Angels. Unfortunately, their old as shit tabletop models now look a bit goofy, but Night Lord artwork is up there with some of the best. Who knows, maybe a Lord of the Night Major Kill Mini is on the horizon. In the Night Lord's omnibus, each warrior had their own distinct style. Talos with his skull helm, Sirion with his lightning bolt helmet, Uzas with his flayed skin cloak, Zal with his ceremonial bat-winged helmet. You won't find that level of diversity with the Imperial Fists, and definitely not with the Primaris. The Night Lords aren't perfect by any means. They are low on number, low on supplies. Many of the living ones were a part of the sadistic gangs that Conrad despised, yet they still maintain their purpose and lessons of their father. A new Night Lord has recently emerged, one with the prophetical visions of their father without all the spurginess that comes with it. A Night Lord that could once again lead his legion to glory. Watch this space. I wouldn't be shocked if new Night Lord models and lore aren't too far off. If you enjoyed the video, like Night Lords, and want to see some tits, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to some, some pretty cheeky anime titties. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more content to bat to. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.